Hey everybody, so in this video I want to show you if the infeed table, if our standard infeed table will fit on your saw or not. And if you have a saw that this can actually work for but might need a little modification. Let's take a look at some of the specifications that you're going to need to know before you order at one of our infeed tables. So the first thing to think about is how this clamps onto a, our bars. The, the bar of our table saw goes in here and then this clamps onto it. So you need to have enough room for this piece of angled aluminum to go in between the saw and the bar that your, your uh, table saw fence slides up and down. So let's take a look at that. So from this point to this point of your saw, you need to have enough room for that to fit in. Now this is really, uh, it's about an eighth inch wide. It's not very wide, but you want to consider if your bolts, on a lot of table saws, the bolts maybe not, may not be flush for your mounting system. They may stick out a little bit. So you always need at least say eighth inch, three sixteenths of an inch for this angled piece of aluminum to fit in between the front of the bar and the table saw itself. So the toggle clamp is completely adjustable. You just take out these four screws and you can move them back and forth. So really any width bar is gonna be fine for, the, for this system. The next big consideration is height. And what I mean by that is the top of the bar that your fence slides up and down and the top of the table saw and what that height difference is. On saw stops and a lot of other saws, it's right around seven eighths of an inch. When you consider the three quarter of an inch thickness for this, and then the one eighth thickness for the metal and the cork rubber on here, the anti-slip cork rubber works out right out to seven eighths of an inch. But that might not be the case on your saw. For instance, if you have a Grizzly, you might have from top to here to right here, like an inch or maybe slightly over an inch difference. Could be even as much as an inch and a quarter. This will still work. You'll need to put shims underneath the aluminum to raise that height. Now you want to keep in mind the thickness of the aluminum and the anti-slip cork rubber is an eighth of an inch. So you'll want to make that vary. And if it's an inch, it's, let's say it's an inch and a quarter here, you'll want this thickness to be an inch and an eighth. Because when you add this on, you get your full inch and a quarter. So that will absolutely work. You can even shim up the clamp if you want to. In that case, it really wouldn't be necessary, but you could if you felt like you wanted to. Now the, the inverse of that, shimming is easy, but let's say it's under 7 eighths of an inch. There's a lot of saws out there like that, like the Deltas, the Lagunas, all have a lower one, about a half an inch. So in that case, what you'd have to do is actually remove material from this. Now there's a couple options for that. So the first thing and the most important thing you're going to need to know is the distance from the table saw to the front of your bar. In our case, it's three and three quarter inches. Now if it's under three and a quarter inches, you can just raise your table saw blade all the way up, cut through that, and then cut that piece off. That'll give you that setback or that depth that you need to mount your saw, remembering to take off an extra eighth inch to make for the non-slip rubber and the aluminum. Now, if it's more than that, your blade's not, your blade's not gonna come that high on your table saw. So what you can do is set your saw at three, in, in our case, three quarters, and run it over the blade incrementally moving it in the blade in a little bit each time. Now that's going to leave you with a little bit of a rougher surface that you can sand out. And again, you're going to want to be super careful that you're not taking too much off. So to demonstrate this, what I'm going to go ahead and do, and there's another method I'll show you in a minute. So to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and like tape a piece of material to my fence, raise it up, and then I'm going to match the height of this to that material. So in, effectively, I'll be closing that gap between the height of the saw and the height of the bar to something like a half inch. Let's go ahead and do that real quick so I can show you how easy that really is. So what I've done is I just put a piece of uh, thin plywood on here to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So if your fence was closer to the top from here to here, you're going to get that gap if you were just using this the way it is. So I need to remove that material that we just talked about. And because I'm three and a quarter inches away from it, the fortunate thing is I have a table saw. I mean, this is for the table saw, so I can just take that material away. Now the other option is if you have like a planer, if you have a surface planer in your shop, you can plane plywood. You can just plane off the difference of what you don't want and that fits. So we're gonna do both methods today just real quick just so you guys have a visual reference of how it's done. All right, so what I've done is raised my blade up. That's gonna give me the, the distance that I need to remove or the, the amount of material I need to remove from here. Now because I have to go three and three quarter inches deep, I can't just raise my saw blade up, so I'm gonna do that incrementally. Now, of course, you guys, most of you know that you can do this with a dado stack, or even um, you could use a router table as well. Okay. 
So as you can see, this surface is a little bit rough, so I've left the blade slightly below where I want it. So after I do all that, I can come back. Now, because I don't want to spend the rest of my day moving this over in eighth inch increments, I'm just going to cut it down to where it's about two and three quarter inches. Now I'm going to put it up against my fence and come back and raise the blade into it and cut through the rest, cut the rest of that material off. And I'm not measuring it at this point. I'm just guessing. So by sighting down here, the plywood lines, you can see the lines in the plywood. I can tell where that dado is at. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it down that line. And I will say, I will mention that you want to make sure that your blade is very parallel with your fence face. Because that could be, a, you could get that a little uh, askew and that would be bad. So you can use a sharp chisel to just remove that rest of that rough stuff that we cut from initially. Or you can just sand it. So with that done, I'm gonna put my cork rubber and aluminum on here just to show you guys and set this in place and voila. I could actually take a little bit more material off of that, but that is not terrible right there. It's really that simple. Now, the one thing you're gonna to wanna to consider when you're mounting the hardware is we include screws in these for the, both the aluminum and the clamp that take into consideration a three quarter inch piece of material. So in this case, I'd wanna go and maybe get their number sixes, so I'd probably go get some number six five eighths or some number six half inch screws to put into these positions here. Now this right here, the clamp is a full eighth thick. So three quarter inch screws will work all the way down to like, if you take this down to five eighths, any more than, than this, any, this thins out any more than five eighths. And then you're gonna need to um, switch out the screws on the clamp. Now the other consideration is the depth of the groove for your miter slot. Now you wanna make sure that when you're mounting this, you mount this so it's on either side of that. And if you go, you can go fairly thin with that. You can go all the way down to where there's just a little bit of material left. The clamp right, or the, the aluminum right here is screwed on on both sides and the clamp is screwed on on both sides. So that's gonna offer you quite a bit of strength just in those two things. So you can actually get pretty thin with these and still be very safe. So the next option, if you don't wanna go through the hassle of doing what we just did on the table saw to thin your material out, is to just use a planer. You can plane plywood. And just like that, it's perfect. So now it's just a matter of mounting the hardware just like we did and there's a video above this one that you can check out for how to install. Now the difference is you'll need to change the screws from the three quarter inch deep screws to a five eighths or a half inch. So it's that simple. It's not hard to modify these to make these work as long as, as, long as you have this gap right here or that's over an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch and this height is somewhere in the realm of, fifth, of one of like a half inch all the way down to it could be as much as an inch and a half. You can make these work.